How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Michael Saylor just talked about Bitcoin and uh, left some of the CNBC hosts speechless. I want to show you the clip. I also want to explain why MicroStrategy might be something that you're interested in or you should be interested in moving forward, why you might want to invest in that in addition or uh, instead of maybe the Bitcoin ETFs. We'll talk about that along with the greatest probably the greatest bullish uh, theory as to why Bitcoin is going to move up in the future. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video. If you've seen videos like this and you like them, you'll probably see more of them. So you might as well hit subscribe. And there's also a link down there to Marjax. In case you want to trade cryptocurrency on leverage, you can check out the link. It gives you a deposit bonus. And this is usually the best time to be trading cryptocurrency on leverage when the market is moving up like this because it has been quite bullish, you can check out that link underneath, along with the link to CoinW if you'd rather trade over there. You have been uh, early and courageous, and you continue to double down. Um, I want to talk about where you think Bitcoin is, but also want to talk about how you think about a micro strategy in your company as a proxy for Bitcoin now that ETFs are available to the public. Sure. Well, I think I'd start just with Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin is, is certainly at least digital gold. It's going to eat gold. It's got all of the great attributes of gold, and it's got none of the defects of gold. If you could teleport gold from New York to Tokyo in a, in a few minutes, people would like it. And the price of Bitcoin is going to have to adjust up in order to meet that investor demand. So I think that's what's going to happen next to the asset class. MicroStrategy's got leverage. If we borrowed $800 million at 62 basis points, is there any company in the world that you wouldn't like to invest in that could borrow a billion dollars at less than 1% interest to invest in your best idea? So we get that very intelligent leverage. It's, uh, it's non-recourse, it's unsecured, and then we buy Bitcoin with it. That leverage gives us volatility, the vol it gives us performance, the performance gives us volatility, the volatility attracts capital, it's uh, it's given our shareholders more Bitcoin per share this week than they had a few weeks ago. So it's very accretive for them. And it's pretty compelling for every investor. If you're Bitcoin curious right now and you want to buy Bitcoin at the all time high, how do you get the upside in Bitcoin with downside protection? MicroStrategy sold 800 million in debt and we have 12, 13 billion dollars of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So. So we're giving you an over collateralized loan and the upside. But if you're a Bitcoin maximalist and you love Bitcoin and you want to hold it forever, the ETFs charge you 25 basis points. MicroStrategy is accreting. We're giving you a yield against your shares in a tax efficient fashion. So the maximalists like the equity, the, uh, the hedgers, they kind of like the upside with downside protection. Um, first, with regard to Bitcoin, no, there's, there's no doubt in my mind Bitcoin was a better investment at 17000 than it was at 65000 I take the Warren Buffett view on this. Bitcoin's a, a superior investment to gold, equity, bonds, and real estate because it's digital. You can trade it a million times faster than conventional assets using a computer. It's available. Most other assets only trade less than 20% of the time. Bitcoin's trading 168 hours a week. We bought $800 million of Bitcoin and a lot of it uh, we bought uh, over the weekend when all the conventional markets are closed. It's global. It's the most widely recognized and trusted uh, at own, at investment asset in the world right now. It's ethical because it's the king of all commodities. There's no issuer. There's no company. There's no country controlling it. And fundamentally, it's, it's useful. Thousands of market makers can trade it all the time. Millions of companies can trade it. Billions now, that clip was from a little while ago, like a week, maybe two weeks ago. But it really underscores why you might want to hold MicroStrategy as part of your HODL portfolio in crypto. And since then, Bitcoin has done extremely well. But MicroStrategy has done even better. If you look here, the the last month, MicroStrategy has gone up 136.2%. iBit, on the other hand, which mirrors Bitcoin, is up 29%. So MicroStrategy has vastly outperformed. And there are a couple different reasons for that. Uh, they ask him about that actually after the clip that I showed you. They ask, why would someone buy MicroStrategy instead of buying a Bitcoin ETF? 
And really the reasoning behind it is one, they actually have uh, no fee compared to BlackRock, compared to Fidelity, compared to GBTC. And fees are on a lot of people's minds, especially when they look at the high fees from Grayscale. We've seen half of the Grayscale assets flow out of GBTC or half the GBTC uh, being sold off since the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF. So a lot of people are fee conscious within Bitcoin. So some people I think are moving over to MSTR. The other reason is they can leverage up so they can get cheap debt. If you look here, since that was published, they've done two of these. They've raised over a billion dollars at less than 1% using convertible notes due almost a decade from now. So they can get really cheap leverage and they can actually become accretive or they can actually have accretive uh, buys of Bitcoin, which basically just means that you're getting it at a good value less than really, uh, or you're getting more Bitcoin per share basically because of their purchases. So that has been super bullish. And there are more ETFs that have been trying to swallow up Bitcoin uh, and they're there are more products coming like uh, just yesterday. This was announced. The London Stock Exchange will be launching Bitcoin ETNs in May. We also know that Hong Kong is going to uh, create spot Bitcoin ETFs in Q2 and they're going to be in kind creations and redemptions. So Hong Kong, London. We also just got news that Morgan Stanley is most likely to uh, approve these Bitcoin ETFs on their platforms within the next few weeks as well. This is from sources inside Morgan Stanley, from inside Bitcoin ETF firms and legal uh, insiders adjacent to both. They're one of the largest institutions out there as well. So we have several more ETFs coming to the market. We have Morgan Stanley probably buying or pushing it to their clients soon. Recently, we had news that BlackRock was basically getting into uh, tokenization of real world assets. They're starting a hundred million dollar stable coin essentially that pays rewards. We also got news that Coinbase sounds like they're gonna start an ETF. Like everyone is trying to get into this space. And I think that's because they realize the potential moving forward. They understand the market. Let's just take a look at the three different levels of capital right now in the market. First, we can look at capital just in stable coin, right? This is stuff that can easily put, be uh, converted over to Bitcoin. Maybe someone wants to buy the dip on Bitcoin or wants to go all in on Bitcoin. Over the last year, the market cap of USDT has gone from about 81 billion up to 104 billion. So it's gone up 25%, 30%, something like that over the last year. That's significant. At the same time, the next level up, right? So this this is the first level, stuff that can be converted into Bitcoin within a minute. The next level up is just capital held on the sidelines in money markets, savings accounts, stuff like that. So that can be moved over to Coinbase, Binance, whatever you wanna do, and you can start buying assets. That's at a record $6 trillion. And there are articles circulating around traditional media, like Wall Street Journal saying the era of no brainer 5% returns in cash is ending, basically hinting or talking about the fact that the Fed is going to lower rates. So yeah, you're not going to be able to get a nice yield on your cash of 5% much longer. So we know some people are either going to divert some of this money, saying money markets, CDs, savings accounts over to more risky assets, or maybe they just keep it in there but then more new assets are going to go into riskier assets, right? That's bound to happen. It's just how it works when the Fed starts cutting rates. It makes more sense to go into higher risk assets because you're not getting as good a return on your cash. And then the next level. So first level, second level, third level. This is something we have to wait for. But the great wealth transfer, there's an estimated $84 trillion in assets that will change hands over the next 20 years. This is according to uh, consulting firm Ceruli Associates. Now, there's also, I, I saw this, this is less substantial, but it is interesting. About, about 1,000 billionaires are expected to pass on more than 5.2 trillion to their children over the next 20 to 30 years. So a much smaller number, but coming from just 1,000 billionaires. That's crazy to think though. 1,000 billionaires, estates and assets are gonna be passed down in the next 20 to 30 years. Now, where do you think all these people are going to put their money, right? Are they going to keep it in old hedge funds uh, with financial advisors? Maybe. Uh, are they going to put it into 
mutual funds that return 8%, 3%, maybe. Are they going to keep in real estate? Maybe. But don't you think a couple percent is probably going to go to something that they really like, something that they've seen go, go up uh, year after year after year, cycle after cycle, into something that is more interesting to their generation and to the younger generations? I think that's very likely to happen. Right? I think that a lot of billionaires, a lot of millionaires, a lot of people getting passed on their assets will probably take some of those assets and put it into Bitcoin, into crypto. And when you think about it, you know, in 20 to 30 years, let's say someone passes away at 70 or 80, right? They're passing down a lot of wealth. A lot of these people probably already have like a pretty successful life. Uh, let's say their parents are billionaire. Well, the kids are probably millionaires. Right? They probably have a decent base of uh, assets and capital. So it's not like they're going to have uh, to spend a lot of it to pay off their house. It's not like they're going to have to uh, really build a strong foundation for their assets, right? No, they're probably gonna they're probably gonna keep part of it and whatever it's in. And then the liquid part that's easy to put wherever they want, they're gonna put it into something higher risk, something that will return a little bit more like Bitcoin. So this is the third layer, right? First layer, it could be flipped into Bitcoin within a minute. Second layer, maybe a day. Third layer, maybe 10 years, 20 years. This is going to flood into Bitcoin. And remember, $5 trillion or $80 trillion, let's say $1 trillion flows into Bitcoin, that causes the price of Bitcoin to skyrocket. And by 20 or 30 years from now, I'm guessing a lot of people will have already put money into Bitcoin or Bitcoin ETFs through financial advisors. I mean, think about think about the massive shift that we've had just in the last two and a half months. Really think about it. From no one being able to invest in Bitcoin through traditional means. Of course, you could buy MicroStrategy at the time, but not too many people did unless you were already in crypto. You could buy miners as well. But it's not like financial institutions would really push that to their clients. But now we literally have BlackRock talking about it on national television. We have institutions pushing it to their clients. We have them putting it into portfolios, within portfolios, uh, in some of their assets, uh, the global allocation fund, stuff like that. And it's just becoming a lot more mainstream at the same time the price is going up. So if you're bullish right now and you want to put on some longs, I understand there is a link, like I said, to Marjax underneath the video. If you have an idea uh, for some other asset that you're investing into that you think will do really well, let me know in the comment section. I really appreciate it. I get that that MicroStrategy clip was from a little while ago, but I think it's really important to take a look at it now, especially because MicroStrategy has done so well and all these other ETFs are coming to the market. It might be something that you want to put in your cryptocurrency portfolio. I know I hold some MicroStrategy. It's not it's not a super substantial amount compared to how much Bitcoin and how much uh, of the Bitcoin ETFs I have, but it was something that I added to during the bear market. So maybe you want to take a look at it and just pay attention to it. Put it on your watch list in case we see the market go down. MicroStrategy will probably fall down faster than Bitcoin, and maybe you want to pick up a little bit. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, one last thing. It's fun to think about where Bitcoin will be like in the next couple months in the next year or two, we often talk about Bitcoin way out into the future, right? We talk about where Bitcoin is going to be at by 2030. Something that I don't hear talked about too often is where is MicroStrategy going to be by 2030? Think about that. I mean, it it's so volatile compared to Bitcoin. Like I said, in the last, uh, well, let's look at the last one year. It's up 700%. Bitcoin, uh, I don't know how much Bitcoin's up, but it's definitely not that. Let's pull it up here. But it's trading, MicroStrategy is trading at two or three X the multiples of Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes up another two, three X, I don't think it's crazy to think MicroStrategy could be at $10,000. I mean, that's about a five X from here. They're going to get more cheap debt. They're going to continue to buy Bitcoin. They're going to continue to uh, leverage themselves up. So I don't think it's crazy to think that we could see that five-figure Bitcoin, uh, five-figure microstrategy. But the question is, where is it in 2030? If Bitcoin does a 14x from here, you know, okay, so here we can see it went from 27 to 70, so a 3x. Uh, so if microstrategy 
continues to do what they're doing now. Let's say Bitcoin goes up 12x, 13x in the next eight years or so, maybe by the end of the decade, whatever it is. Could MicroStrategy do a 20x? Could it be a $40,000 company, a $40,000 stock? Yeah, I think it could. Honestly, um, it's crazy to think about. I think they would actually do a stock split. Maybe they won't. I wouldn't be surprised though. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if they did that soon. I haven't heard too many people talk about it, but a lot of people have a hard time buying $2,000 of a stock. Now, most platforms allow you to do fractional ownership uh, or fractional shares, but some don't. And we still see stocks pump like crazy when there's a news announcement of of a stock split. And part of it is the psychological thing. Part of it is too, you can play options a lot easier. Like right now, if you want to sell a call option or something, let's just say, yeah, you, you want to sell a call option, you'd have to have almost $200,000 of micro strategy to do that with. Some people will probably want to play option strategies with micro strategy and it's very hard at $2,000 a share. So it is interesting to think about. I mean, uh, we could see a stock split soon. It would hype up. I think it would hype people up. Um, I'm actually surprised they haven't talked about it. And then they could probably issue even more cheap debt, which would push up the stock even more. It's really interesting, all the stuff that they can do and all the options that they have. But let me know your thoughts underneath the video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Sorry, I rambled on a little bit here, but I do think it's important to go through all these different scenarios, talk about where MicroStrategy could be years into the future. And yeah, they do hold 1% of the Bitcoin supply now. Quite bullish. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate it. Again, you can check out the links underneath the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.